Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, I want to give a shout out to my new sponsors at Jelk to Grow. It is skincare for your penis. And if you've never thought about it, now is the time to change that. Jelk to Grow is crafted with the perfect blend of shea butter, beeswax, and tea tree oil. And it not only nourishes your members' delicate skin, but also enhances your overall appearance and health. So this is their penile balm. They actually do all kinds of stuff. They do um, ball stretchers. They do penis pumps. Everything that has to do with your delicate member down there, Jelk to Grow, has you covered. Um, They are offering an exclusive 20% off for our listeners. Just enter the code HOLLY at checkout. Visit jelktogrow.com. That's J-E-L-Q-2-G-R-O-W. And use code HOLLY to get 20% off. You can also find the link in the episode's description. All right. So my guest today, I'm just so incredibly pumped about. I talk a lot on this podcast about how sex workers are business people first and foremost. And today, my guest is the true embodiment of that. She is the number one most liked OnlyFans creator. And in just three years, she's amassed 1.7 million subscribers, over 20 million in earnings, and a team of more than 20 employees. Welcome, Bryce Adams. Hello. Thank you for having me. It was quite the intro. <laughs> I know. I hope it was all true. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I have the data. I have all the numbers to show you. <laughs> I Because you know how like sometimes the internet like lies and, and I'm reading this and yep. going, fucking hell. Like this is amazing. <laughs> but you can attest this is all true. So I'm so excited oh, yeah. to hear your story because that's that's really impressive. Um, you. so, you know, let's start at the beginning, like with your decision to sign up for OnlyFans and this was during the pandemic, right? Actually, I missed the whole first year of COVID. We signed up January of 2021. So I missed all of 2020 when everyone was on the whole rise up. So mm-hmm. but I still got, I still got some. And so, but yeah, yeah. so it was an interesting decision. Um, truly struck out of boredom, but I just thought I would try it one night. It was Sunday night. It's our date night. And I just went on there and signed up for it. And in two hours, I sold $62 in photos. And I was like, seems like pretty quick traction. And Mm -hmm. uh, my boyfriend was right there on the couch and showed him. And he was like, hmm. And uh, we have a bit of a business background, which I can get into. But that's when the wheels started turning. So, yeah. I mean, was like modeling even something that you had any interest in doing before that moment? No, no, actually, I hadn't really considered it. Um, we actually started our first business right out of high school. So, I mean, we were like young and, you know, figuring life out type of thing. And we basically built our first company, which is reselling sporting goods online. So we learned a lot of business stuff from that, how to manage inventory, a team, I mean, just all sorts of stuff. So it was very much like that was entrepreneurial spirit early on. And that's just kind of carried out. I just never thought I would be like in front of a camera, actually. So, uh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> I, yeah, actually, same. <laughs> uh, I get You're that. Accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I started off behind the camera, and now I like. I also have an OnlyFans, and I do like some modeling on there, and it's weird, and I never expected to get there. But this is not about me. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, unless we couldn't talk about me, if you'd like, I mean, it's I, I always want to hear more. I'm it's very intrigued. My <laughs> favorite topic, but I feel like everybody's yes. here for you, so. Oh. I, I guess I'll ask first. you. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I guess I'll ask you more questions about yourself. All right. Uh, so, like, um, so, w- were you posting nudes like right off the bat, or how did that work? Ooh. Okay, so good question. I'm pretty sure my first, the first couple of photos I sold actually were uh, like transition photos, like me through my, like my fitness journey from like where I started mm-hmm. to where I was today. I don't even, they were not nude actually. Uh, so that was kind of intriguing too. Cause it was like, I wasn't sure what to make of the platform. I, I bare bones researched it. Like I went into it totally blind, not knowing anything about it and just figured I would try a couple of things. Um, so yeah. And I've always been very comfortable physically with myself, but I think I got more comfortable doing OnlyFans, And I also, we we did a big fitness journey type of uh we did a big fitness journey let's just put it that way so i went from like i was never overweight or anything like that but i just never had any muscle mass or anything so it's just kind of like just a skinny girl type of thing not much shape and then going through a fitness journey the last few years i gained a lot of muscle and i i like how i feel now and so i got mm-hmm. more body confident i guess you'd say yeah i mean you worked really hard to to get that body right so you're like why should i not show this off <laughs> 
I didn't have a butt before. Everyone thinks you're like born with it or something. I'm like, not me. I, I earned it. It was a lot of hip thrusts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so how quickly did your OnlyFans like career take off? So you, first you started mm. posting non-nude, like you said, and then I'm assuming yeah. you you probably, did you go slow? It was like topless and then bottomless? Like how did how did that progress? Um, actually, because I, all right, so prior to this, like I mentioned, we, we just did our, our e-commerce business. So like, I didn't have any social media following. I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have like anything that normally people come with like a following and then they kind of yeah. bring their audience to OnlyFans. I didn't have any of that. So I'm totally unknown. Um, so literally I'm there starting, you know, just engaging with a couple people and in real time, they're like asking me for a photo or something. And I'm like, I don't have that. I will, I will take it. You know, I will go get it. I will fulfill it. Um, it scaled very quickly. Once we started to realize the opportunity, the type of, uh, the opportunity was huge. And then just the kind of like the other products that were on the market, I was like, I feel like we could do this. I feel like we could do this really, really well. And it was a conversation of me and my boyfriend kind of together. We've always worked really, really well together. Our skill sets just right. mesh very well. And, uh, so he was totally fine. He's always been super cool and confident uh, in our relationship. And we've always had a really cool, honest dynamic. So he was super supportive out of the gate. And he was like, hey, cool, you know, rock it, try it out. And yeah, so just, I think within like the first month, it was mostly just like a, hey, how far do we want to take this? What am I comfortable with? Um, do I want to show face or not? Because initially I started with not showing any kind of face. So I was like, just like neck down type of thing. Um, and then we were like, we ran out scenarios of like, well, do we care? Do we care if family finds out? Do we care if this affects our future opportunities? You know, things like that. So within like that first month, we kind of made a lot of those decisions. And man, nine months later, we had the most liked account. So I think we scaled pretty quickly. <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I just want to say, though, how incredibly important it is that you guys did have that discussion discussion, and you really thought about all of the outcomes, because I do feel that sometimes people get into, you know, I mean, porn specifically, but even like OnlyFans and they don't think about all of those things, you know, no, like everybody always thinks, mm -hmm, everybody always thinks like their family won't find out or their friends won't find out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you just have to have to accept, you know, like there's a lot of wonderful things about doing OnlyFans or, you know, selling nudes online or doing it, like any type of sex work. Um, but there's yeah. also, you know, there's the downsides. Do so you have to like decide is what it the right fit you. yeah mm -hmm. exactly like what i think you have to take a look at what are your life goals who do you have in your life what's important to you and make the best call for yourself i don't think there's like a one size fits all i i liked the opportunity that we had because it was whatever world that you wanted to create on your only fans page is your world you set your own boundaries your rules everything and you're the one that can change them too if you're like you're like i want to try this out not my thing i'll go over here so that's what i really liked about it and then the fact that we could run it as a business and i could take the time to make like good art basically like i mm -hmm. could feel good and engage with people and that was what made me happy and <sighs> Yeah, I think a lot of it came down to like, I had a really good support system. Like I knew that ultimately I had my boyfriend. That was what was going to make me happy and secure. And so if, as long as I had that, I was okay. Like everything else is going to be just fine. But I know not, it's not necessarily everybody's situation, but we have that dialogue where we can kind of have those conversations and decide things together and then kind of execute from there. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you if um, the fact that you like had a partner that you felt comfortable with and you felt like a solid relationship with, if that really, yeah. you know, influenced you to make the decision that you made. Because obviously, yeah. like dating is hard for people who get into, you know, any kind of like online sex work or, or whatnot. Oh, for sure. Finding yeah. somebody after the fact is usually pretty difficult. Yeah, I mean, we have like a lot of my friends, some of them are in relationships and they do OnlyFans with their partner. Some of them are single and they're still kind of still mingling around. And definitely I've seen kind of like all sides of it where there's different people that I interact with and they'll be like, oh, that's cool, that's totally fine. And other people are like, oh, I won't, I won't come near you type of thing. So to each their own, all that. But definitely, like you said, if, if you're not already kind of in an established relationship and things are kind of that works for the both of you, I can see it being a little bit of a a harder thing than most people they don't they don't expect that out of the gate like hey i just met you and this is what i do <laughs> so yeah 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 totally so you guys do you guys do scenes together yeah we did a ton uh a ton together and then we've kind of always had like this fun open relationship and we kind of give each other as long as there's everyone's open honest safe that type of thing um we have the same parameters for each other so that's kind of like uh a long-standing thing that we've had and then just really it really uh, was allowed. It really allowed us to kind of make the most of this opportunity too, where we could have a really great time and a fun moment, and you know, get to know other people really cool 
really cool people and just really interact with them in like a nice moment and share that them also with like our fan base, but then come back together and know that like, that's extra special too. So yeah. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's an amazing dynamic to have. Um, so have you only done collaborations for OnlyFans or have you ever shot for like a porn studio? Do you have any like interest yeah. in doing that? I've only ever done stuff for our OnlyFans and most of it's like a uh, home shot, I guess you would say. Uh, most of the time we're filming on uh, on iPhones. <laughs> um, we kept it pretty low tech. Honestly, I kept it very raw, very real. I never shot for any kind of professional company. And I don't think I'm going to go that direction. Like nothing against it. I've met, with, you know, met plenty of people who are like super accomplished in that space. And it's incredible the amount of like effort and work that goes into that stuff. I mean, that's it's crazy. I have a lot of a lot of admiration for the amount of the dedication that takes. So, um, but yeah, no, everything we've done is pretty much, pretty much also like in, in house sh uh, shot, edited, etc. And when I edit, like, uh, or when my, sh I don't edit. Let me put that out there. I don't edit my my team edits. But when they would do, it, like, we wouldn't like add or cut anything out. We would keep it very real and very raw. So, like, if I walked into the room and I tripped over the rug, or I, you know snort laughed or something i would leave it in like just like those little moments that add a little bit of character i think that is what connects people especially when you're engaging on like that tight intimate level especially through only fans so I yeah that dynamic that, through through all my videos yeah no that that makes sense and that's very um brave of you it makes me feel like maybe i should have left my five attempts to do the sponsor ad at the beginning of this podcast maybe <laughs> i should leave that in for authenticity's sake hey you can give it a go <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was a great time. <laughs> well, as long as you enjoyed it, that's all That's all that matters. But the world will think that I am um, perfect at ad reads. Right She's very, very good. Very talented. Very good. I loved so the talented. hyping. <laughs> yeah. Really good at reading words off a page. <laughs> so what has been the biggest challenge that you've faced from a relationship perspective since starting your OnlyFans? Um, yeah, it's hard to say because it's like so much of this is like is our real life. Like we chose to go at this and publish like everything like on our page. It is my gym, my cats, my boyfriend, my friends, like all the stuff that we're doing. Um, and we have kind of branded it as like an end to end vlog. Like, it's the most real vlog out there. Because most of the time vlogs, you know, start and they just kind of cover your life and they stop at like the bedroom door and then you know most adult content is just the bedroom scene so like i liked that that we kind of put everything in there so if somebody really wanted to know the full spectrum of our life and the characters the people who are in it they could see that on there um and i don't know if it's necessarily the biggest challenge but i definitely it definitely was like a oh that's interesting like i'm living my life and i'm sharing so much of it i think it was more like like a Oh yeah, we are doing that, but it was just so natural for us to do. It was just one of those things like you had a quick moment and we're like, oh, huh, it's different, interesting. But then you moved right along with it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel like I answered your question well, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you did. I mean, so do you guys really kind of like film everything, or do you ever, you know, say like this is something that we're going to leave for us, or we're, we're going to put our, yeah. our phones away for this moment, or for this vacation, yeah. or whatever? Or do you always feel like the need to like? produce content and like you live your you know because some people like they yeah. generally like live their life on camera and other people yeah are very selective about those moments sure i would say we found kind of a happy balance we tend to film a bit more than not but a lot of that is just very natural like i said like so our team that you mentioned earlier they come to work on our farm every single day like in person like we have a four thousand square foot building out back that is our part gym part office so like everybody's here and very committed very dedicated and they're our friends so it's like even when work stops like some people end up hanging out and working out hanging out and like filming some stuff or popping in the hot tub so like we're always kind of around and people are so natural that they'll like they'll be ha you know getting a recording or you know getting a clip or somebody will do something funny so like just naturally we're kind of documenting our life anyway so a lot of it gets captured um and then we do kind of keep those those date days consistent the sunday the sundays are kind of like uh, my boyfriend's name is brian we always are kind of together on sundays and we just chill take a lot of walks brainstorm and eat some good food so that's kind of like our more of our offline day if you will where we recuperate um but other than that we're not super selective we don't like try to chop things out or avoid topics or anything like that we try and just you know put things out there Right. Um, did you just say that you live on a farm or you work on a yeah. farm? Okay. So we call it 
All right, so ten, it's a 10 acre property. We call it okay. Big Pharma as a joke, okay. F-A-R-M-A. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a farm. So um, I don't have many animals. I will forewarn you that we don't. I have cats and fish, like, ooh, big farm. Um, but we have enough people around here all the time and a lot of construction projects going on that it definitely feels like a farm. Like there's a lot going on. So are these construction projects, is this like sets or like buildings for producing content or is it something completely different? Um, a lot of it is mostly, I would guess you would call it, most of it would kind of be categorized as like home improvement type of thing, but mm -hmm. it's all in the basis of having really cool backdrops for content, whether that is for OnlyFans or for YouTube or for Instagram or anything like that. Like we wanted to have the coolest, awesome space that us and our friends can enjoy as much as possible. So, uh, as a small recap right now, we are putting in a hot tub and a fire pit out back right now. And my six stall horse barn that was out front we are completely converting into a two bedroom two bath guest house but like full rent out type of thing so um we put a lot into the property making it ours but if we wanted to make it like an amazing place that people could come so like the guest house is because we have so many people come visit and stay with us for a week or two and it's like i want them to have a really cool awesome space and also then they're not in my house <laughs> the entire time yeah yeah that's definitely so. a bonus Sounds like you got like quite the compound going out on out there. I know the the gym and stuff is really really cool. I'll have to send you some photos, but we put a lot of effort into that because it's like it's two thousand square feet of gym equipment. Like, and my boyfriend loves gym equipment, so like we did we designed, critiqued every like little square inch of it, set it up for filming, all that. Um, and then the office space is amazing. So we have, like editors downstairs, chat team, and advertising is upstairs. So it's like everybody has a really cool environment. It's just. Oh, that's fun. I love it. Yeah. No, it sounds amazing. And I definitely want to get more into like all these like specific business parts of your um, OnlyFans. But uh, first, we're going Please. to take a quick commercial break. So hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. All right, everybody, welcome back. Okay, so I want to get into like the nitty gritty a little bit about your OnlyFans team because you're very open and honest yeah. about what you put into it and how you run it, which is yes. refreshing because a lot of people are not. Uh, so you have a team of over 20 people working for you at this point. How did that team yeah. evolve and what does everybody do? Okay, so... Fair warning, we are not the best at hiring. We based, basically, if we have good friends and they have good culture fit and we're like, oh, do you know somebody? Well, cool, come on over, we'll upskill you, we'll find a place for you type of thing. So that's kind of how our team grew is like, we had a couple of good eggs and they found more good eggs. But uh, a lot of it was just, we, as we grew the, the business and there was more and more demand on our time, uh, we needed more help. And so from the get-go, we were super honest. So like everything was based around me trying to optimize my time to be able to message fans back and be able to engage with them and make content. Like that was like, that was my sole purpose type of thing. Um, I have an ads team that we've built out. So that was just to help build the business. Um, we did a lot of promotion within the platform. So again, I mentioned like we didn't have socials. I only started doing social media in like the last year to be fair to me. So a lot of these uh, benchmarks of getting the most like page and being the most follow creator were achieved prior to us even having social media like posts and stuff like that. So, um, so can you so explain now a little point, bit more about that specifically? Cause that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Cause most people 
who because the thing the, oh, the thing about OnlyFans is that it doesn't have great discoverability. They're changing that a See, little bit with like OFTV and stuff like that, but it's yes. still like not great. So how did yeah. you manage to grow without a social media falling? Because that's crazy. Sure. Yeah, as a side note, love OFTV. I've been on there basically really early on, and I love that. That's been that's been great. But you were correct; they don't have a discoverability mode like built in. The, it's not like an Instagram or anything like that. Um, they definitely rely on the creators to kind of advertise where they want, you know, publicity and eyes, which makes sense from like a creator's perspective. If you want to have control over your audience and you know keep a tight knit community, you can totally do that. It's um, also so hard yeah, so though we, because like so many of the platforms don't allow you to link to OnlyFans, Instagram specifically. True. So there's a lot of challenges oh, yeah. there as well. There is. So you have to kind of, you know, build different little hoops for your, your fans to grow, mm -hmm. to go through and all that. But it can be worth it. It can be worth it. But um, yeah, I mean, let me think. We I'm trying to think where I want to start here. Did you do like those like pay for shout outs with other performers? Because I know that that's one of kind the popular of. things. Yeah. So it started off with doing like a, basically we call it on platform advertising. So I would pay another girl to shout me out on her page. And now sometimes mm -hmm. they'll do like trades back and forth. Um, I didn't do the trades. I just decided that it was easier if I could just, you know, give them what they were asking to, to do a promo and shout them out. And then because we had so much of like a business background and data background, we would measure what would happen and then kind of decide to engage more or less or change our ad copy. And I mean, we took a ton of time to, you know, like, a B test, you know, which photos, which captions to use. Like we went nitty gritty with it, which no one has to do all of that. We're just like crazy data people. So like we did all of that to optimize every little inch of it. Um, and then we just took that to scale. So then we just went to a number of different creators and tried to kind of just, again, try and reach as many eyeballs as possible. Um, and we also did it in a super authentic way. Like I just always, you know, my captions are always like super true, super authentic. All of my videos, by the way, are real. Like everything, every all the scenarios and stuff on my page is 100% like me and my life. Um, so it's really easy to be just yourself. And that that really connected really well with a lot of the audiences. So we just, we started off with like one advertisement, I think in April of 2021 and just kind of scaled it up to there. And now um, I think I've done business with like, I want to say close to 2000 different creators on the platform. So I really love that because I love, meeting a lot of the other girls and being able to support their businesses too. Um, so I have a really cool network. I've met so many, like I actually have genuine friends that have come to visit me that I've met through advertising through OnlyFans. So it's just really, really, really cool. fun. It's really cool. So thankful for that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like what I actually love about the sex work community. It's very um, like cohesive and everybody's, it's a small industry and there's a lot of like uh, support. Um, I mean, there's always like the the pettiness and, and whatnot, but there's there's still a lot of like <laughs> camaraderie and support. And I feel like you see that yes. more here than like in other industries. And I really love that. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I think I think I've met a lot of close people and everyone does seem to put in a lot of effort and they're they're always there for you. Like if, if you if you've treated somebody really right there, they'll go that so the end of the earth with you and I've just I've been thoroughly impressed with a lot of like the people that I've actually met through this like they're some really really great girls so yeah what has been like the biggest surprise for you about OnlyFans from like when you started it to where you are now like mm. and maybe even about the people specifically that are on it like did you ha come into yeah. it with like, certain expectations or a certain idea and then you feel differently now yeah it's kind of funny because you would think I would come into it with like some expectations or some preconceived notions and I didn't have too many of those thoughts which kind of glad because I didn't have to like retrain myself at all um but I two twofold one I got a lot of personal growth out of this actually like that's by far probably the most surprising thing out of that like I feel much more secure in myself and my body and my image and like I speak more confidently and like I've learned like to push myself in in situations where I may not have tried something and like I've learned a lot more about like oh I like this or I don't like this or hey I, I wow I am capable of doing these things like just like a lot of personal growth so like forever grateful for that because I would not be who I am today without that um so that I love that I absolutely love and adore and then I think the second part is definitely the fans like they it's a bit of a pain point for me because they get such a bad rap from like the gen pop if you will of like oh you're you know you stepped an only fans girl you must be you know they think the worst of them and it's very funny now because now that i've started doing social media i 
am like so spoiled with my OnlyFans community. They are so positive. They're willing to give me feedback. I'm like, hey, look, guys, I know I know you're really super upbeat, but like tear this, you know, this post apart. Tell me what feedback I need to do. Tell me how to get better, et cetera. And they're so there and dedicated. And then I'm like, I go on social media and they're like the comments are so just like mean. And I was like, oh my God, you guys are so yeah. <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> so um, anyways, I think the fans on OnlyFans are amazing and actually like really stand up people and very dedicated, very like just, just nice people that are there yeah. for you like they selectively chose to follow you for a reason so they really want to be that they're invested in you so i just try to reciprocate that as much as possible but i wish people would understand that they are humans too and they are not lesser than or anything like that so that's a pain point for me but yeah no i hear you i mean it's funny about how like the people who are willing to you know pay money to you know chat or interact with you are you know the ones that are like the the people that you want to talk to right like the, the yeah. they're not like they're not going to pay so that to insult you but then you go on like social media and all these people who can follow you for free <laughs> are just like you stupid bitch it's just like it's it's crazy and i mean crazy. i remember i remember so i don't get like i mean i definitely get negative comments don't get me wrong um but it's not too bad compared to what i know a lot of performers see oh, and i, rem I remember yeah. specifically i collaborated with adriana chechik on a instagram post okay and so, you know, okay. we get comments from from both yes. from both people. And oh my God, the things that people say to her, like I, I just I couldn't fucking believe it. It was yeah. so mean and like aggressive and like like I wish she would die. And it was just like oh really my God. insane. You know? Whoa. I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. Oof. I, I don't I can't I can't say that I read all my comments because I definitely don't, but maybe yeah. there's one of those hiding, but that seems like next level, like they're having I a think really probably yeah, I think because she's, you know, like she's a very um she's very popular and she's a very like out there performer and she's done a lot of like crazy yeah. shit, right? Because she's just mm -hmm. like one of those kind of performers and I and I love her for that. Um yeah. that you know, she you get a lot of people like projecting their own sexual insecurities onto her and and it's Yeah, it's that's nuts. fair. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, it's. It's. it's it I mean, like, much more about themselves than than oh, <laughs> than you, always, the subject. <laughs> always, whenever someone's mean to you, it's always about them. It's like never about you, and that's yeah, one thing that, I think I've definitely learned over the years. That seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, because it's like you go on OnlyFans, and you know it is generally full of a lot of like really nice people who are like just looking to connect and support somebody. Yeah. Right. So the oh, whole yeah. idea of getting on the platform is on a positive note, as opposed to, you know, sometimes on social media, it's just like people who are just looking for someone to attack to make them feel better about themselves. But then obviously there's exactly. also like really lovely people on social media too. So it's, it's a bit yes. of both, but. Uh, I find a lot of my, dedicated fans end up following the social media and then they add the, to the niceness in there so i'm like yeah oh, there they are you know i love yes. that so that that's much is good but <laughs> um so what is your biggest motivation like what gets you out of bed in the morning um hmm so it's funny because we didn't start this for like monetary reasons or anything like that a lot of it has just been like personal goals we like to build cool things with our friends like that it doesn't necessarily matter the vehicle, if you will, you know, the mm -hmm. business that we are doing, as long as we're doing something that is challenging to us, pushing us to, you know, new heights, learning new skills, you know, presenting us a daily challenge. That's kind of what we kind of get up to do and then just live our life and have as much fun as possible. So I, I think, I think that's probably it. Like I have, I have a great boyfriend that I can do this life with. So it's like, cool. I want to spend as much time with you doing fun stuff with our friends and we get to document it and share it and then it comes full circle like this is great you know so it's probably it <laughs> yeah and then you also uh donate a significant amount of your earnings to charities that yeah right? so thank you for asking and uh, mentioning that yeah so over the last two years on only fans we would do um i would do charity lives and some of them would be i would just i would do like a, a naked workout so i would actually do my full workout in the gym and then i would just end up stripping down and 
it was nothing crazy, nothing sexual about it. I was just more like, yeah, you can see all of me in my, my glory as I do the movements. But we would raise and donate the full amount to a charity of choice. And sometimes they were naked workouts, sometimes they weren't. Um, but typically it was a charity that had special meaning to myself or to one of my friends or my boyfriend or even a fan. Um, so that was really cool. We raised and donated over $125,000 now to various charities and it's been really cool sometimes we tie it into like a like a holiday um so like we would have veterans day come around and we would do like a veterans live show and we would raise and donate all of the funds on that one day and all of my friends and girlfriends would hang out and we would hang out with you know we'd have fifteen thousand fans on the live stream engaging and we'd fundraise and i always post the receipts um i would post the full amount and you know like of would take their their fees and i would still post the full amount that we raised so um just a really cool rewarding time just another time that like you could People would be upset with you, like, oh, you're an OnlyFans creator, like, oh, you know, terrible. And I'm like, well, we just raised and donated to charity. Like, how do you rectify that? You know, I we love that little, like, kind of making them think a little bit extra. So that's been yeah. very rewarding. So um, you've mentioned that you've faced, like, some stigma from, you know, being on OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. And specifically, they were saying that happened with the Miami Marlins. Is that right? So we rented out the stadium down there. Um, yeah, I wanted to do an oh, end just of year. The stadium, just the stadium. <laughs> so that's that's what this is right here. First ball, Miami 2023. It's oh amazing. Uh, we, I had this harebrained idea, and I was like, I wonder if we could rent out the baseball stadium. So going back to our roots, my boyfriend played baseball from when he was like five on. And, you know, growing up and all that together, like I would watch all of his games. Our first business was hoarding goods business. We sold thousands, hundreds of thousands of baseball bats, like baseball is in our blood. So it was always this thing of like, I was like, that'd be really cool for him to hit like some balls on a major league stadium. So I was like, this would be a great time. We're gonna invite all of our friends, my family, his family, we're gonna round them all up at the end of the year for like a nice celebration. It was like four months of contract stuff and craziness back and forth. And, you know, I wired them the money, we rented it, we rented a, a plane to take friends from our town down in Miami, like all together. Like we had people flying in from like Germany and Washington, like everything's great. 17 hours beforehand, we get a notice that they have canceled it and voided the contract and we can't play baseball. And we were like, oh my God. So I guess somebody, we had sent, uh, we spent literally probably 120 hours doing all of the field graphics. So like all the little ribbons that go around the, the banner of the field and all the little screens, the Jumbotron, like we made like a 20 minute, video a montage of everything that we had done together all of this is completely safe for work by the way like mm -hmm. like my mom was going <laughs> my dad mm -hmm. was going mm -hmm. like we were just going to have like a nice family event and uh yeah so i guess they watched our montage video and i think somebody looked into us a little bit further and i guess it ran it up the flagpole and they were like nope can't go so 17 hours out we had to scramble and we ended up still going to Miami. We just rented a boat and took everybody out. It was very cold. <laughs> it was like 62 degrees. But yeah, that was an unexpected twist and turn that we did not um, see happening. And um, I think the Washington Post wrote an article on it about the cancellation. They, that was nice of them to, to do that. Uh, but yeah, so that was just, it was unfortunate. I get it's business and stuff, but it was like, I never hid who I was. I gave them social media handles. We were very clear about, you know, what we were doing. And we even offered like solutions. We were like, feel free to have as many, you know, field babysitters as possible, which like security deposit, I'll give you that, you know, like there won't be any issues. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll find a different stadium. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. And unfortunately, like an all too familiar story that, you know, yeah, I've encountered I've heard, a lot of that. I heard a lot about like banking and things like that. I know a lot of creators yeah. have issues with that. A lot of people are working on cool products in relation to that. So hopefully that'll help. But yeah, it's I feel like it is getting better. To be fair, I feel like it's becoming more commonplace. Like years ago, even if you were like a YouTube creator, people were like, YouTube, that's not a job. Now it's like yeah. the number one job of like people growing up. They're like, I want to be a YouTuber. So I think hopefully that will that will also transcend into this space as well. And hopefully people will become more accommodating. I think that the younger generation is, you know, because that's what they're growing up with, right? They're becoming more understanding. That's fair. I don't know if you can breed the distaste out of the mouths of the, the older people, but you know, they'll die eventually. So <laughs> <laughs> I do agree that the younger crowd seems much more happy and willing to be like, oh, that's cool. You do you kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I want to go back to uh, your team. So you have yes. some chatters and you're very open yeah. about that. And that's mm -hmm. interesting because 
that is not the case with a lot of people. So can you explain yeah. for my audience who may not know like what a chatter is and, and what they do? For yes, you? sure. So, um, okay, I have three pages, which as you can imagine, with the amount of fans that I have, I get a lot of messages. And I did as many as I could possibly do for as long as possible. So much so that um, I actually had hired, we had a, at our peak, I think four or five developers uh, and we made our own software. And it was to help me message as many as possible in a shortest amount of time while still being able to like optimize my answer so if like they had a video request i had like a drop down that had the video preloaded like all these like things we thought of wow. so i could spend my time to you know maximize my efficiency and it just at, well, at a certain point you're just like even if i spent 24 hours a day i can't get back to everybody so that's when we uh we opened it up i got my girlfriends all trained and like they would sit like 10 feet from me and like I was super transparent about it. Like it's in my welcome message. They say, hey, my girlfriends are gonna help me out with my messaging. They're right here. If they have any questions, they're gonna let me know, but I train them. If they have, if, you know, if they're not sure about anything, they'll, they'll pass it down the line type of thing. Um, so yeah, it's been super helpful. And my fans are actually really loved it. They loved the honesty and they loved to get to know my girlfriends because they see them in my content. So it's like, they're already aware of who they are. So they have this like cool connection of like getting to still talk you know, about me and still experience me and see my friends in the content and then get to know my friends. So. But that mm -hmm. helped a lot for me to be able to then focus on like, hey, when I do a live stream or something like that, I can put all of my effort into making the best live stream possible and engage with 20,000 of them in one shot. So right. that's been really cool. But yeah, super honest and fans are happy. I love it. So so when a fan logs on, do they, are they like, do they generally talk to one specific chatter or do they mm. get like bounced back and forth between them? And do they like yeah. ask like, who am I talking to today? Or do they just kind of not care? I neglected to tell you that they sign each message with who is writing the message. So we, we know that. And so the fan also knows that and they get to know okay. everybody. Um, and then all of my girlfriends have pages too. So it's like they, if they want to go support them on OnlyFans, they can, or if they want to go check out more of them, they can. So it's been really cool too. So it's from like a fan perspective, they get to know the person, but then they also can continue a conversation on there, you know, on off hours too. Um, but yeah, it was mostly just, we would try and do like oldest and newest. So that it would kind of be a mixing some, there'd be occasionally a couple people who like we would put in a note and be like, like, nope this one's for lily you know every single mm -hmm. time um but no fans are super cool about like they'd like to get to know a variety of people um yeah so then if they ask a question like as in they're talking to you so they say like yeah you know hey good morning do you like soup does <laughs> lily respond and say i love soup or does she respond and okay. say bryce loves soup did you see him saying? Bryce loves soup. She, yeah, she'd be like, hey, this is Lily. I'm not sure if you saw it, but I'm one of Bryce's girlfriends. And then uh, sometimes we have, a, we have like a pin post or whatever. So sometimes they'll like it, depending on if they're new or if they've been there before, or they've been offline for a couple months, then we'll kind of give them the rundown of like what has changed since they were last there. Um, and yeah, then she'd be like, Bryce really likes whatever soup. And then, you know, hope you're having a great day. And depending on the relationship that they end up having from there, like the person may actually end up asking about if Lily likes soup. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, but they're always are like, Hey, this is who it is, who is talking. If you want the answer about Bryce, here's the answer about Bryce, blah, blah, blah. Do any of them insist on talking to you and offer to like maybe tip or like spend mm -hmm. more money to talk to you? Not typically, actually. I, I, I actually was talking to Lily about this last weekend a lot. And I was like, how often do you run into like somebody being like upset about it? And she's like, I could maybe count it on one hand, which for the amount of fans that have like come through the page and stuff like that, I mean, that's north of like two or two, two, yeah, 2.5 million people. So it's like for, to, for her to like barely have kind of like anybody on the top of her head of being like, oh, they really took exception to that. And I think it's pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, no, not really. I, I think everyone's been pretty, pretty damn cool. If we do spend a lot of time and I, I mean, years, we spent years going to making sure that like our pages are set up with giving as much as possible. So like mm -hmm. a lot of my fans are on free trial links. Like my the really big page I have, like a lot of them are on free trial links. I wanted them to have a cool, fun community, a safe place that they could come to and be themselves. And so we give a lot out just for free. And I mm -hmm. just try and, you know, give if you will. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like it's, it's just really fun. So I think that's, they come and they, they see that it's, it's different and it's not what they necessarily expected. Um, and it's that I think has built like a lot of like really good rapport with them in their head. So when they go, do go to message, they kind of have that mindset already. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's definitely like super unique and 
really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's different. So, yeah, it's definitely different, but it's obviously working for you. And it just, I mean, it's it so is. funny because I've always talked about how, only, you know, the explosion of OnlyFans points to like how people really like authenticity and they, and they like yeah. talking to, you know, their favorite creator and, and learning about who they are as a person. But like you kind of take that one step further when you're like, I'm so authentic yeah. that if you're not talking to me, I'm going to be like honest about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well said. Just, yeah. I mean, that's just really interesting. So you. when you hit uh, the milestone of number one, most liked creator on OnlyFans, um, yeah. how did that feel? And was it a close competition with the number two? Is number two Cardi B? Am I crazy? Uh, no, not Cardi B. I actually okay. don't know who's number two at this point. Um, I think the girl who was number two actually deleted her page like earlier this year. So I don't know what happened there. Um, she was but mad. I think we'll, I, something <laughs> happened. I don't know. Hopefully she's doing okay. She's like, I didn't make it number one. I'm only number two. I don't, being number two, I don't like know. most like, is, is an, still an insane number. But anyways. Yeah. At the time, I think when we took when we took over as being number one, I think it was like six point eight or seven million likes, something like that. And I think you know she was sitting really close to that, so we kind of like ran up and chased up against it. And then from there, it started to gap pretty hard. So I think ballpark in the beginning of the year, she was like two million, two and a half million behind us, something like that. I want to say we're eleven or twelve million likes now on, on that one page. Um, but yeah, so. I think the next closest person is still in the single million digits, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it just it just speaks to the same the same core principles that we've been kind of talking about the authenticity, the authenticity, the connection, the community, all of that. And I think it's it's much like bringing a, a product to market. The market will tell you if the product is good or not, type of thing. So mm -hmm. yeah. You also mentioned that um, initially you start you started off like not really showing your face. And then yeah. like maybe doing stuff with masks or sunglasses, but you're obviously now showing your face because we can see you. <laughs> uh, what made you change your mind? So, yeah. So coming into that first month, that January month when I talked about like figuring everything out, it became very apparent it was really hard to take pictures or film things not showing face. So the black lace mask became my my little go-to. And that opened up a lot of doors. I still felt like kind of like it was at first for like privacy. And then now they had like, over the last two, three years, it kind of transitioned into this like center of intrigue of like, oh, that's that's different. What is that? It's actually kind of funny because then like uh, as my friends started to get involved in it, they too kind of went through their own journey. And so there was like this little like masquerade ball we would have in the house because like so many of us would be wearing the black mask. <laughs> I still have so many of them. It's funny. And then I actually I would come across other creators who were starting up and I'm like, there's the black mask, you know? So, um, but then, yeah, I would do any public facing stuff. It would always be in a black mask or sunglasses. So even when I started social media stuff, you go back to like my old stuff. I'm always wearing sunglasses. It could be nighttime. It could be indoors. Doesn't matter. I'm wearing it. So, um, we just wanted to have like a little bit of an extra layer because my VIP page at the time was, um, the only place I was full face that and in, in videos, I ended up going full face in videos and on my VIP page. So I was like the last little holdout of, trying to give like a little something extra there. Um, but it kind of came to the point in uh, February of this year where it was like, it was apparent that we were going to commit a lot more time to making like the social media content, YouTube, stuff like that. And it just became, we were missing too many moments where something cool would happen and we would be filming it and it'd be like, oh, you don't have your sunglasses on or you don't have your mask. And it would be like, damn, we just missed a really cool, interesting, you know, moment. And now we can't share that with everybody. And I was like, you know what? It's all good. Let's, let's go the whole way. And so I just, I did like a little reveal video on my back porch and it's been smooth sailing ever since. I actually, I really liked it, really enjoyed it. And I got nothing but positive comments back from people. So I've, I've been pretty happy doing it. My fans are happy. <laughs> everyone, <Yeah>. everyone won. <laughs> I mean, you're adorable. Did that oh. reveal video, like, did that like do incredibly well? Cause people were, you know, so no, it didn't. No, it did. <laughs> <laughs> not incredibly well it did okay it did yeah. fine but, but like i think like the most watched video no oh god no no on, on instagram i want to say it's like i don't know six hundred thousand views something like that my most viewed one's like the most viewed instagram video that i have is like 200 something million the one on my post like on my main channel is probably like 19 million so in comparison not even close yeah, yeah not even close <laughs> wow <funny>. yeah <clears throat> so um so obviously you mentioned your parents, right? Your mom yeah. and your dad being invited to Bryce Ball. That didn't, Correct. that happened on, a, ended up having on a boat. 
But uh, <laughs> when, uh, when did you tell them what you were doing and how did they react? Okay. Uh, dawn of the year. I told my dad on Father's Day. Yay. Um, I actually waited like a whole year and a half after starting it. Um, they knew we started a new business, but I was, my boyfriend was like, just tell them. Like, he was like, do whatever you want, but just tell them. He's like, it's going to be fine. I definitely took far too long and drummed it up into being this bigger thing than I ever anticipated it being. And so I psyched myself out. And then when I finally did it, I told my mom, my dad, uh, my sister and brother-in-law all on the same day. And everyone was like, all right, cool. You safe? You healthy? Great. And that was it. And I was like, shit. <laughs> like I made this way harder on myself for like so long. So um, yeah, no, I just, I just like, I wanted to avoid a hard conversation, like truthfully. And once I did it, I was like, it's okay. Everything's great. You know, I feel like either people are there because they love you and they're going to support you um, or they're not going to. And I, I kind of realized like, if they're not, then maybe that's not the right you know, kind of people that I should be around, but they were there. They were supportive. Uh, my mom, like, will write, like, we're having, like, a, a live show or an event or something. She'll write, you know, everything out on the on the whiteboard and make it all pretty for, like, the backdrop of a video. Like, oh, thank you. And she helped me decorate my room for the Halloween live show. I mean, like, just just cool stuff. So That's <laughs> very, great. very supportive. It's so. always the anticipation of the conversation is always so much worse than the conversation. It's like, so, and the that, longer you yeah. leave it, like, the worse it the worst that like anxiety gets i know that 100 percent, 100 percent. that was a it was a good learning lesson where i was like wow i just wasted a lot of time didn't i <laughs> <laughs> so. so how do you uh take care of your mental health as someone who is like forward facing and online so much do you have like yeah. ways to like unwind or you know make time for yeah. yourself yeah, good question. I know that in this industry, that's definitely like a big stressor because a lot of it, a lot of people who are creators don't have a team or don't have, you know, a giant, like I'm lucky to have the support system that I have. I know not everybody is as, as lucky to do that or is on their way to building that. Um, so mainly I think it's having like the routine and having some goals. I, I lucked out a lot with having my boyfriend just because, and because we've been together so long, like I, I like, He's like my rock and you know stable place, and then uh, I think keeping our you know our date days that those are really recharging. Those are really fun, um, and a lot of it though like we work a lot, but like we don't look at it as work. Like this is our life. It's fun for us. Like we will go for walks at nine p.m. and like ten p.m. at night, and like that's our like unwind time. But we're like catching up and we're brainstorming, and like it's not work for us. So it's like the if we have like a burnout or something like that, like I'll go work out for thirty minutes and I'll feel a hell of a lot better, and I'm like at it you know what i mean like I, it's not that difficult for us and like even when we take like vacations you know we tend to have like a chill time but we'll bring four or five people with us that are our close friends and like we'll you know do fun events that are you know good for content but sometimes then we'll just end up chilling on the couch playing some chess you know by a fire for three hours like we just mix in like a nice balance of what we need it and we just keep going because we we like our goals and we're motivated by our goals so we don't look at it as like I don't know. It doesn't really strain us that much. Yeah. But we're lucky you. to do that. Do you think that also too, like the fact that you're so into fitness helps with that too? Cause I just know that personally, like for my yeah. own mental health, like I have to work out otherwise. And I'm yeah. like nowhere near as dedicated as you are. But if I don't, I get like, it affects my mental health. Like my husband plays yeah. hockey. If he doesn't play hockey, oh, cool. For like three days, like he kind of turns into a dick. And I'm like, babe, please go. Oh. And then he comes back and he's like a completely different person. Oh, that's good. Hey, at least you know that now. So you're yeah. like, go play some hockey. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, I I mean, having the gym in the backyard too, it's kind of like, well, the startup energy is incredibly low. So like there's no excuses for us to not go to the gym. Like mm -hmm. I can't be like, ah, oh, it's a drive, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's definitely an outlet, at least for me. Like if I have like a like a pain point or a problem I'm trying to solve or I get like agitated, like I'll go bust out like twenty pull ups or do some hip thrust or something. And I'm like, I feel so much better afterwards with just throwing some weight around. So that definitely I don't I don't think that's hurting anything whatsoever. So I think it's probably helping. Yeah. I think the endorphins from from exercise I just I don't know. I think it's like one of those things that's overlooked a lot in terms of like helping people not only obviously be healthy, but like mental health like for me it makes such a big difference and, and oh like for sure that it's something that you know people don't like account for that much you know like a lot I would of agree. It, there's like you know i've i've had like therapists try to put me on like antidepressants or like stuff like that and um 
nothing against those because I know some people really need it. But for me, like I sure. found that it's, I don't take anything. And for yeah. me to be able to, like what makes me feel better is literally going like for a run. Even though I, I don't <laughs> actually like exercise. I fucking hate it. I hate every second of it. <laughs> Like every second I'm like, God, I wish this was over. But like afterwards, like the way that I feel is like, that's everything. So, yeah, no, at least you know that about yourself. Cause then you can infuse it in when you need it. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. More power to you running. I can't run. I, 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 I guess sprint, but running, I'm like, Oh God, Oh, please no. <laughs> and when I say running, I mean like two miles. <laughs> that's still, that's, that's, like, a lot. that's like a lot. I did. I did three miles yesterday and I like, couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no yeah more power. no 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 i'm like i'll, I'll maybe make it to the driveway i'm like yeah i'm good <laughs> good for you <laughs> um all right well thank you so much i do have a couple of questions for my patreon members that i want to ask you before yeah. we wrap things up sure um no so, so first i want to say hello to my new patreon members um harry thurston eric phillips and monica anderson thank you guys so much for joining really appreciate your support so I have uh, a couple of questions from Hugo. Um, his first question is, does your fame get to your head sometimes and how do you stay humble? Ooh. Okay. Um, I don't, or, it's funny. We were just having like a small conversation about this. I think I think I definitely have like learned that I, I like more attention, I guess. But most, most people do, most people do. But um, past that, no, not really gone to my head actually. I think, I think I often think we're a lot smaller than we are. And like mm. occasionally we'll have like a brush with re like reality where I'll be like in Publix and somebody's like, I knew you lived here. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. Um, but like that's probably it as far as like, you know, the shock of the fame goes. But no, other than that, I, I think I just, I don't think so. I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think is the ideal age to get into sex work or OnlyFans? Ooh. And is there like a difference there? Um, I mean, obviously everybody has to be, you know, 18 plus, fully legal, fully consenting, all the things. But I don't know if there is really an ideal age. I think it's it's more up to the individual person of like what they want to do with their life, what phase of life they're in and what their goals are. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen tons of creators through or, you know, their, their life changes because they've paid off their other college loans. And then I've seen other people who are like, you know what, I'm, you know, resetting and I my kids are out of the house and I'm, you know, 16, I'm kicking it. And I'm like, cool, more power to you. Like, we're good. So like, I don't know. I think just have at it. Yeah, I think as long as you really think about, you know, what you're getting into and possible repercussions, that's really important. Which exactly. leads me to my next question. Do you have any advice for new sex workers or anybody who's looking into getting into OnlyFans. Ooh. Okay, so kind of like my go-to on that is if you're starting, starting and start and don't stop. Don't give up. Like there's gonna be there's gonna be challenges. There's gonna be things that are gonna crop up. Life's gonna happen. Um, but it's very much like a life sort of principle because you can apply that to anything. You can apply it to working out or a diet or anything like that. But especially this, like if this is something you're interested in, like you can try it out. Maybe it's not for you, but like just log in every day, do a post every day, send something out, you know, just set like a little, like a little win for yourself every single day. And like those little things will compound and you'll get excited and you'll get like a win and you'll just keep going. So that's, that's the biggest thing. People give up far too easily and far too early on. Just keep going. You'll get there. Yeah. I agree with you. I actually, um, I see that with podcasting a lot, actually, a lot of people start podcasting yes. and then they're like not successful right away and they stop and it, it's, it takes a while. It took me a long exactly. time to get my show to where it is today. And I still like, don't think it's where it should be. I feel like it sh I should do better than I do, but uh, you know, <laughs> I, we're all, we're all in the same boat. I feel the same yeah. way sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful to be where I am, but also like YouTube should stop demonetizing my videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think my traffic. Oh, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, okay. Uh, last question is you kind of, you ans you ans yeah, you answered this already, but I'm just going to ask it. So he doesn't think sure. I didn't, I left him out. Um, uh, Michael mm -hmm. Lee wants to know if there's any chance that you would make the jump into mainstream porn. Ah, yep. Yep. No plans to do that right now. I'm very, I'm very busy. We have some other new stealth projects going on. So I'm like super focused on that, but, uh, appreciate him asking. 
Awesome. All right. Well, Bryce, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you and uh, really admire like your process. And it sounds like you've got everything dialed in and you're just another really great example of how I always tell people that like sex workers are literally like entrepreneurs and they're business people like up and above yeah. everything. It's it's different than what so many people expect. And you're just a great example of that. So thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so glad you could have me in my, my little my little room, but <laughs> yeah, no, of <laughs> course. Time. Uh, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media if they don't already know? Sure. It's Fit Bryce Adams pretty much everywhere you can look. That is where you will find me <laughs> under that username. Perfect. And then you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. I think I'm Holly Randall unfiltered. Just go to hollylinks.com and you can find links to all of my platforms. There's, I'm on a lot of them. Um, and <laughs> of course, my OnlyFans is... Actually, my, my free OnlyFans page is onlyfans.com slash Holly. They like gave Ooh. me that URL, which was... Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Alex Good gave for me you. URL. I was like, whoa. Hell yeah. Like, Do you want Ollie? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I, him. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I have yeah. an OnlyFans uh, uh, channel where I post this podcast as well. So you can also find me there. And um, of course, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered to access all of my interviews live, or in this case, it's not streamed live, but I will do an early release of it, um, ask questions like you just heard, and uh, get access to bonus content. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.